Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Frozen Cortex. This is, if you're saying that it looks familiar, it's probably because it was previously known as Frozen Endzone, but the name has recently changed and it's also from the developers of a fairly popular simultaneous turn-based tactics game on PC from a couple of years ago called Frozen Synapse, which might make you uh, familiar with that. Most people are probably more familiar with Frozen Synapse, I guess, even though Frozen Endzone slash Frozen Cortex has been available on Steam Early Access for a year. Well, if it's been available on Steam Early Access for a year and it's not out, why are you covering it again, Northern Lion? Well. The first thing is I have a soft spot for these kind of like single player sports games and that's really what uh, has been added in this update is a lot of single player modes. Previously this is the kind of thing you jump into multiplayer and you'd play against a friend or you'd play against you know the people online, five people online right now. So not necessarily an, enormal, an enormous global community but it actually you know isn't out yet, it's in beta. Um, but the single player mode is much more robust now, there's a few different kinds of leagues and stuff like that and also I'm, I'm a sucker for these I played probably not only in the Polaris Blood Bowl League last year but I probably played about 20 hours of single player Blood Bowl last year just because I was having fun with it and I'll explain what the heck is going on here in fact why don't we just play a quick knockout mode game and we'll just start one up here uh, so you can get a quick explanation of what's going on we're gonna play knockout which is the main single player mode of the game it's almost like a fighting game where you basically just have to keep winning if you ever lose then you get knocked out um, Really nice splash screen here that is uh, telling a little bit of a story. This actually does have a little bit of a story mode going on in the single player. I'm going to be honest with you. It's kind of a cool addition, but I really don't care. I'm more mechanics focused when it comes to this. So this is like our league standing screen. I'm going to skip by a lot of this stuff, except uh, team customization. Just to add a little bit more dynamicness here. We can, uh, we can customize a wide variety of things, but I'm just going to customize our player names, and then we'll get started. I haven't talked about the basic mechanics of the game, because it's going to become much easier to talk about once we actually... Uh, get to the point where we have the field. It's basically a sports game. Well, let's put it this way. It's basically a simultaneous turn-based tactics game like Frozen Synapse, but with a sports feel as opposed to a combat feel to it. It's a lot like uh, Blood Bowl, except there's less RNG. Instead of being, you know, influenced by weighted dice rolls. Who's player number five here? We'll make player number five uh, Mathis. Instead of being influenced by weighted dice rolls, everything is predictable, which makes it much more of almost like a... Imagine if XCOM didn't have dice rolls, and just if you had a line of sight on somebody, and you shot them, they would die. That's pretty much how it works here. Some people are going to be for that, some people are not going to be like that. This is a very niche game, combined with the fact that it's niche, and then... Well, we got a fairly long loading screen here, so I might as well just uh, start it up here. I'll talk about all the other league-based stuff as we get further and further along, team customization, upgrading, etc, etc, as we get further in. But we'll just play one game to show it off here. Um, combined with the fact that it is an early access, simultaneous, turn-based, sports tactical game, it's also a niche product because it is still on Steam Early Access a year after release, but it's come a long way. The last time I played it, it did not have uh, nearly the same degree of single-player robustness. It basically, I don't even know if it had a uh, even a skirmish mode. So the fact that there's actually like a compelling single player mode, or a couple of compelling single player modes in here is nice. Um, plus it has this kind of uh, voice acting, not voice acting, sorry, um, but announcing that goes on here that gives it a little bit more dynamicness as well. It doesn't have the same kind of voice acting as um, Blood Bowl does, but at the same time uh, it is nice to read this stuff and get a little bit of flavor text. So we're playing against the Western Republic here, and that has taken too long so it disappeared because I didn't talk about it. Alright, let me explain just what the heck is going on here. I should preface this, by the way, by saying that uh, I played about five hours of this last night, or four or five hours of this last night, so I am uh, very much into Frozen Cortex so far, but I recognize that it is a little bit of a niche thing. Beyond that, what are we, like 10 minutes into the video? I also should disclose that, you know, I've had amiable Twitter conversations with both of the uh, people that I know from Mode 7 before. We're not digital best friends or anything like that, but I was a pretty big fan of Frozen Synapse, so I've, uh, I've talked to them on Twitter before, and if that makes you think that my opinion on the game can't be trusted, more power to you. Go ahead and uh, check out somebody else's coverage of the game. In any case, let's get started here. This is our game board. We can actually middle mouse click and that'll give us a, an overhead view. It's football, basically. It's American football, um, but it's five people per side, so you only get five uh, robots, and um, it's, it's turn-based. You try to score in the enemy zone, they try to score in your zone. So you can see here it says offense going south. You have as much time as you want to take your turns, and every game is 12 turns long, or, you know, when the last team scores basically the last team to score in overtime it's sudden death now they're apart from just like getting a touchdown which is worth seven points much in the same way it is in american football if you ignore the extra point there's also these point squares on the ground if you are a ball carrier and you run over the point square or you have the ball when you touch the point square that's an extra two points automatically which is almost like the game's version of getting a field goal to some extent for now they are on uh, offense first which means they're closer to the ball 
Uh, so they'll be able to pick it up, and that's going to end the turn. The turns end whenever something dynamic happens or something important. So if someone picks up a ball, that ends the turn. If somebody intercepts a pass or receives a pass, that'll end the turn. If somebody gets tackled and the possession changes hands, that'll take a turn. It's not like the turns have a set amount of time. Uh, this is a game where positioning is unbelievably important. So we know that one of these units, we can actually program enemy moves if we want to. So we can see what they'll do. So this is like the preview screen down here at the bottom. We'll know they'll pick up the ball. So let's assume this guy's going to pick up the ball. He could either run or pass. After you choose to run, you can't pass anymore. So uh, we're, we know if, if he's going to pick it up here, we can look at some of the passing lanes. By the way, I know there's a lot of rules coming at you all at once. Trust me, it'll make it easier to understand later. You can pass over low blocks, but you can't uh, pass over high blocks. Basically, that's it. You can't jump over low blocks either. So if this guy gets the ball, we can look at his vision from here. Oh, no, we can't. That's fine. Uh, if this guy gets the ball, he'll be able to pass, like, over in this general direction over these blocks. He'll be able to pass, like, straight down the field over these blocks. We gotta try to get in his way. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put you on, like, almost a blitz-type path here. Basically, it, it's so easy. It's like door kickers, basically, to give people instructions. I'm just gonna tell them to go this way, just with the right click. The only other thing we can really do is, um, we can... There's a clock that comes up under the actual, uh action and we can drag that out and that'll program how long they stay there I shouldn't have added that extra one there um, and let's let's get that clock out of here because we don't want that anyway you're gonna do that I'm gonna have basically like rockly smile be my strong safety back here I'm gonna try to move over myself and cover this passing lane um, I'm gonna have you try to fall back and cover this and I'm gonna have J Smith OTI fall back and uh, hopefully handle defense here. So once your turn is, is planned, you prime it out and then everything happens all at once and you go to this cinematic camera angle where you can see what happens. The game looks quite nice, I actually think. Very colorful, very kind of futuristic and some of the animations, particularly for tackling, look awesome. Like your robot will drop kick another robot or like, you know, bash it on the top of the skull. With the cinematic camera, it looks pretty slick. All right, so that's the end of the first turn. It's, it's very much like trying to play chess when your opponent moves at the same time as you. So you look at, like, you know, there's some Nash Equilibrium type shit going on here. You look at their possible moves and try to make a, a reasonable selection on what they might do. Remember, if he runs, uh, he can't ever pass. It's very obscure. You also can't go backwards. It's, it's almost a little like Canadian football in that way. Wait, am I thinking right? Like, no, that's you can only lateral backwards. My mistake. But if he chooses to run... He could do, he could chart a course like this, for example, and I would probably never tackle him, yeah. It looks like he would pretty much just get there all the way, and if, if I don't tackle him, nobody gets in his face, then that would be the end of the turn. The turn can go until he finishes, which is a little bit difficult to get used to. Uh, you've got to make something happen if you're going to end the turn. So, let's talk about interceptions quickly, because that's one of the ways that possession changes hands most often. To intercept the ball, you want to be in, like, the enemy's vision cone when they're passing it so like if I go here then his if he passes like over here to try to hit somebody down here we'll get inside of his vision cone and as long as we're stationary we'll intercept it uh, I don't know if you can really see your intercept zone this is our chase zone which is basically like when we'll chase somebody for a tackle um, if you're not stationary you won't intercept it so if he throws a super quick pass we might not be able to get in the way um, also if two people run into one another, the one who's stationary will actually be the one who does the block. So being stationary is a huge advantage for you in the game. Don't worry about it, Ruka. We'll, we'll make something happen here. So I think for right now, let's go back just to make sure this is all programmed properly. I'm going to move Kate here to possibly get an interception. I'm going to leave myself here. In fact, I might even move slightly. Like to this direction. Just in case he runs, because then if he runs, I should be able, with our chase zone here, to, to get a tackle on him. This guy has already been taken out of the equation because I hit him uh, with a block from Rockley Smile. I think this position is pretty well covered. I'll move you just slightly up to maybe get in the passing lane. Same, I'll move you slightly there. I imagine that we're probably going to see a pass down the middle. If he runs down the middle, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to stop him, although via the chase zone, we probably will. But I'm going to move Nick just back slightly to protect, and then we'll prime it up. Usually the AI uh, takes their turns pretty quickly, so it's... Ah, there we go. We moved into the perfect situation to get an interception. It might seem like they were being stupid, but honestly, they probably just couldn't... Uh... You know, they, they predicted that we would do a different move. This is on the standard difficulty. On standard difficulty, after five hours of play, I still win less than 50% of the games. So the AI is pretty good. 
So now that he's fucked up that pass, he's gonna, you can see on his stats, you know, his stats are pretty terrible. I'll talk about stats as we get into the league system. Uh, we might even be able to program a super powerful move here and just work our way through all of these point zones and get a touchdown. There's no way we can really pass it because we can't go behind us. So I would have to like wait for another unit to come up there. And by the time that happened, uh, Kate would be tackled. So we'll just pull this back here. Her evasion is not that good and her speed's not that good, but his speed is awful. So even if I set him on a course like this, we'll see. Because again, it's this is what's nice about it. You can actually program like the enemy turns. Uh, or, yeah, and, and test and see how it works. So he would actually catch us in that situation. What if, instead of going the roundabout way here, we just go for these two point zones? Would we be able to make it? Oh, honestly, I don't think so. So the only other... You might want to fake him out. You might say, okay, well, if we can't do that, maybe we want to go, like, this way. And then if he eats the bait, then we're going to be able to get out of here freely. But if he doesn't eat the bait, we're going to eat shit a little bit. You also have to balance, you know, do we want the guaranteed points? That would come from uh, this, or do we want the that come from walking on the squares, or do we want to go for the touchdown? Possession changes hands, not based on whoever scores. It it just alternates. So they got possession first. No matter what, if they score, I'll get possession next. So it might be nice to just bank some points that you wouldn't expect, right? But here's what I'm gonna do. On this turn, I'm gonna have Kate run this route right here, which will probably lead to her being tackled if they guess right. Oh, maybe not. I might be able to make it out there. And also, I'm going to move myself way up here to be a good husband. And if they end up changing possession of the ball, we can hopefully fill up the passing lanes here. And honestly, apart from that, I'm really pretty pleased with where everybody else is. So I'm just going to prime up my turn and we'll do this here. I think we, we've definitely got an advantage here. It is like Blood Bowl, where possession changing hands is an extremely huge asset. If we score here, which is looking like it will happen cool animation there too. We'll get 11 points because we touch two point squares and we get possession back next, which is ridiculous. What this does mean, and a lot of people I think are going to take issue with this, is that it's the kind of game, unlike American football, where if you score on the enemy's possession, that's that's it. Like, because the games are relatively short, you'll get possession back and it's going to be very, very difficult for the enemy to come back from it. It is a game where to some extent, if, if you play well, the rich get richer. So now we have the opportunity to to choose um, what we're going to do on this turn. We're going to play offense. There's nine turns until the end of the game, so we're only about a quarter of the way through it, but it's going slow because I'm taking my time when it comes to discussing it. So uh, typically, I'd say that the average game probably ends up being 10 or 15 minutes total, depending on how quickly you take your turns. So I'm going to have... Uh, I'm going to be the quarterback here. Later, you'll get, uh, as you play more knockout, you get more money rewards, basically. You can use those rewards to buy better robots that will upgrade the ones that you have. And some of them are specialized. Some of them have huge interception zones. Some of them have, like, really high speed or a boost that they get when they pick up the ball. And some of them have, uh, like, a really good release speed, which is basically just, like, they're, the ball, when they throw it, they don't take a long time to do it. So it makes it much harder to intercept. Uh, so you can actually build, like, a specialized team like that. But when you start out, you know, you, you've got a team that is, uh, I mean, I guess a little bit better than the enemy team. They seem to, like, pretty much all be good at releasing and terrible at everything else. But uh, anyway, I'm going to have myself grab the ball. Uh, and maybe we can show off a running play, although passing seems to work a lot better. And then I'm going to have J. Smith OTI take up this spot. Just in case this guy tries to get up in our grill, we'll kick him in the chest, as you can see. Because we'll be stationary and he'll be moving into what is called our block zone. Um, which I don't know how you say it's the it's the circle the the solid outline So if an enemy moves into that block circle or gets close to it, we just kick them out uh, I'm gonna have you post up right here just in case We can actually get a sweet uh, run down here using you as a blocker. You're gonna take this spot and you are going to You're gonna go this way just in case we can do like a Hail Mary pass if this defense goes the opposite way So that's gonna be how our turn is going to look here, and we'll see how it works I don't have a set starting move, and all the stadiums are different, so uh, every time you play, you're going to end up coming up with a different strategy, probably, uh, for, for how things work, rather than just having, like, a constant set strategy. I think, anyway. So we did get a little lucky. Uh, we can also go back and, if you don't like the cinematic camera, you can go back and watch the, the turn from, like, this perspective. We did pretty well. Um, Josh did get the block here. I wonder... What, what else happened on the last turn? So you moved there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try for, like, a, an epic run here. I'm going to have Kate throw out a block here. I'm going to have Nick move over here to hopefully offer us some more protection. And then I'm just going to... Because this guy's going to be disabled for a little while. I'm going to try to run 
like straight up the gut here. Ah, you know what? That is not going to work because he's going to come back too quickly. What if I move Josh around here in the meantime? Oh, that might work. And then we run through here. And we should have you like get over here as well. Maybe be able to throw out another block. Running plays are um, are a huge risk. Because if you fuck it up, you know, you, if you do it and they get in your face, you're going to get tackled. Again, it's not a dice roll. They, they will tackle you. Defenders have the advantage. But uh, it, it can also be a huge surprise because passing is definitely the default kind of like decision to make. So a running play can really take you by surprise if you don't have, if the enemy doesn't have their units positioned properly. But it looks like he has one guy coming back here that is definitely going to be able to stop me. And he did, but at least I got a couple of points anyway by stepping on the point square. So now uh, possession will switch uh, to him. And remember, he can't go backwards. That's probably not a huge problem. But we have a little bit of a huge problem here looking at the screen. He's got so many people open. So I just got tackled. If he runs, we have to have somebody around to take care of it. So that's going to be like Josh and Nick are going to do that. Apart from that, we have to worry about some very difficult passes. He could easily pass it over here. So I'm going to have Mathis step over here. And then Mathis would get the interception. Apart from that, I'm very much concerned about him throwing a long ball here. Like, if he just throws one down, let's say, here, can I get to it in time? I I think that would be an interception. Now, the real issue is, he might have totally realized that that's how we're going to react, and he could just throw one, like, right over here. And if he throws one right over there, we've pretty much left him completely open. So what we might want to do is assume that this guy's not going to go for a run. And instead, we'll take Josh, cancel his move, and move him, like, down here to try to be basically a, a, a safety here. But I don't even know if he'd be able to make it, to be honest with you. But let's try it out anyway. Basically, like the, like the AI said there on the side of the screen, it does come down to a judgment call. And uh, they, they managed to pretty much destroy our defense there. And he could get... Another, he already got two points, I think. But he can get four plus seven. He can get 11 points here and end up tying us if Josh can't catch him. Now, his speed is terrible, but I still think that Josh probably won't be able to catch him. Let's let's assume that he's actually going to run like a basic route like this one. I don't think we're going to get him. Ooh, no, I don't think we are. Maybe if we throw this one like a little further out so that he's got a wider chase zone. Let's see. Oh, I didn't mean to punch my microphone there. My, much... Apology. No, I don't think we're going to make it, so I'm pretty sure that he is going to get a, a touchdown here and tie it up. And that's actually devastating. At least he didn't go for both, because that would have given him the win. But it's still devastating for me, because now he gets possession back. And you do end up with a lot of these games, especially if you're like me and your defense is terrible. Um, you do end up with a lot of these situations where the enemy is... Uh, or the, the games go back and forth a lot. So they're going to be on uh, offense again here. I'm going to... I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to throw Josh in on like what is basically a blitz here. But it's not really a blitz. It's Kate, by the way, not Josh. Uh, it's basically more of an interception attempt. Rarely are you going to tackle the quarterback. But you can get in his face, and then it makes him very difficult for him to pass it out. I'm going to have Mathis fall back to these point zone. You fall back to that point zone. You, uh, you're fine. And I'm going to actually uh, I'm going to fall back a little bit as well. System. I'm falling back because we really need to try to, if possible... Uh, prevent the... Oh, he's still thinking. Sometimes that does happen where you... Uh, I wouldn't say outthink, but you think faster than the AI. Uh, we have to come up with a situation where we do our best possible to protect the point zones. Because there have been games, and it's a little bit difficult to get used to, especially if you've played or watched a lot of like American football in your life. Um, an enemy doesn't have to get a touchdown to win a game. They could just get points instead. Like They could just walk onto a point square. So they have a, a blocker here, which scares me a little bit. But I'm going to try to do this anyway. In the hopes that if he tries to throw, I can get an interception. I'm not too concerned about the tackle. It's more the interception. So where, if he was going to throw, he would probably throw it here. In which case, we could easily get Mathis onto that square. No problem. Or he might throw here. But if he throws there, we would still catch it. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, what if he goes for, like, it doesn't look like he would go for a long bomb or anything like that. If he tries to throw over here, we won't intercept it, but we can also have me move up here, and then 
very quickly probably be able to tackle this guy. I think I'm I'm content with this move, to be honest with you. Let's give it a try here. AI is still thinking, and that's okay. So how do I feel about Frozen Cortex so far? Hopefully, you know, if you're still watching this, you might be the kind of person who's into this. It is a niche game. Oh, okay, so I did throw it this way, so I'm glad I threw... Uh, I'm glad I threw you out to try to handle it here. What's your chase zone? Why can't I see your chase zone? I just want to see if maybe... I don't think this guy's getting out of the way. If he does, like, a super far bank here, can he make it? We we wouldn't chase him down? Are you crazy? I don't know why our, our player isn't chasing. I must be missing something there. All right. Well, then maybe that'll work, and then we'll throw uh, we'll throw Nick back here. And really, the only way he could get through is then if he made the unusual call to go like straight up the gut here. And we'll have Josh move over to hopefully protect that if possible. Like that would get him through. Maybe even move this slightly over this way. All right, let's give it a try. It's definitely a game that is not for everybody, but do you like Blood Bowl? I know that the audience for that is uh, is limited. That looks like it's going to be a pass. Oh, never mind. He just got uppercutted in the head instead. Uh, Kate is, is ready to go here. I'm going to talk about my impressions. I promise you that. I'm just trying to see if maybe we can find a route to pass like through this, but I don't think this is really a great position for us to be in. But because this guy just got smacked down, we could maybe make a move. Anyway, while I'm doing this move, I won't talk too much about strategy. Instead, I'll talk about how I feel about the game overall. It's actually pretty polished for a, uh, a beta product. And I played, again, like five hours last night. I did have the occasional bug that required a restart. Like, the camera would just keep playing the same move over and over and over again. Um, and it is relatively expensive at 25 bucks. Again, this is the kind of thing, you know, Blood Bowl is still 25 bucks as far as I know, and that came out in like 2010, but uh, it's the kind of thing that if you're into, I think you could be really into. Like, if you liked Frozen Synapse, if you liked Blood Bowl, um, and if you're into single-player, like, stat-heavy strategy stuff, uh, you could find this up your alley. I think you have to have an open mind for it. That being said, I'm having a great time with it so far, and is actually, like, it's, it's not something you play casually because it does require a lot of thought, but the fact that the games are so quick makes it kind of a, an easier sit-down strategy game uh, relative to something like, I don't know, XCOM. I mean, XCOM has short-ish missions. I'm not saying this is better than XCOM Enemy Within or Enemy Unknown for that matter. I'm just saying it's different. You know, there you don't have too much to manage from like a, mi a macro campaign standpoint. It's mostly what takes place on the field, which is pretty cool. But it does have some general manager type stuff. That kind of stuff isn't as quite as robust as I'd like right now, but that's okay. Anyway, let's let's at least finish this game one way or the other so we can talk about the other league stuff. Um, I just caught this. I want to just get some points here. What if we just have, you know, Kate run to this point square and we whip out a pass that way real quick? Oh, we, we can't even. Like, I don't want to throw a pass like this. Because I'm pretty sure that the enemy would be able to intercept it. But I also don't want to, like, I think it's a bad position. Because if I just take a run for it, we will be able to run through this guy. But I feel like strike EN4 is going to catch us. I don't think there's anything really that, that Kate's... Kate bot here can do about it unless we run past and maybe yeah like distract him and then run through I don't know maybe we'll give this a try just to see if it actually works and we do run through a point square there I doubt we'll get to it but I didn't really like our other options to be honest with you yeah we're gonna get smacked just before we get there and uh, Kate is not in a good position there so we're gonna have to have Nick fall back like this and we're gonna have uh, Kate kind of approach this way the idea being that you know if they try to throw the ball, at least we can get into an interception square early. I don't think we're going to be able to do too much of, all, of anything uh, to stop a pass here. But we can at least stop like a run. Similarly, Mathis, you'll block up this area. Now, the real danger is he throws across here and gets to this guy. So we're going to have Josh uh, kind of occupy that space and we'll press the button here. There's only one more turn till the end of the game. So basically, it's, it'll be the next score or the next turnover. Uh, but it won't be the next score if they only get two points. Like, if they land on a point square, that won't be worth anything. They'll, they'll have to get a touchdown or they'll have to get two point squares. But I think they've got a reasonably good chance of winning. It's a really... It, it's fun to, like, iterate on what the enemy could possibly do. And then, you know, make your own plays. Because usually what ends up happening is you don't quite have the, the defense. Oh, yeah! This might actually be the end of the game then. With that sweet, you know, head smacker from Kate right there. Yeah, we just won. All right. You can, of course, uh, 
you know, upload it to YouTube, which is the same thing that uh, Frozen Synapse did as well. So that'll give us a win, and uh, after you get a win, you have a little bit of money, so... Oh, maybe in Knockout you don't get money, instead you just get robots. As you can see, all of our robots are below average. They're not below average, but they're below, like, the threshold. They have penalties to everything. We can actually pick up some robots uh, now. You can only pick up one per mission. Uh, but we could pick up a robot like this, which is basically better in every category except for strength. Uh, Yihu could be taking, if you're struggling to get anything above basic units, this personality dampen unit continually invests in failed burger restaurants. Or we could get a unit like this, Emery, which is very good for blocking if maybe you're trying to do a lot of running plays or something like that, but terrible at evasion, so it's not a good carrier, and terrible at speed. It's not a class-based game, but based on the strengths of the individual robots, it can be a, uh, a you can basically make it a class-based game. If you wanted to do a blocker unit, though, you'd probably want to take Xavier here, um, who is probably our best unit. You can be like a safety or something like that, although you're bad at intercepting. Um, yeah, so we'd probably want to take like Xavier here, and then it will replace whatever unit you have, but it'll keep their name. Like you can, there's a checkbox button for that. So who is who's been our blocker? I think Nick has been like a principal blocker for us. So we'll replace him with Xavier, and then that person will become Nick in the next game. Anyway, let's go back to the main menu here. That is supposedly the main mode of the game, but. I think that's basically up to your own, like it says it's the main game mode, it has permadeath as well, so if a unit actually gets knocked out, I, apparently they can be killed even though I've never actually had it happen, they get knocked out for the whole season, I guess you have to start with a new player. But there is also the long form season mode, so we're going to play um, a standard long form season mode. One thing that I do think is a bit of a complaint is that there's no, um, what am I trying to say here, there's, oh, there's no multiple save files, so you can't have like five different seasons going at the same time. You can have them going on different difficulties, like you can play standard or easy right now and you unlock more if you actually like win a season on standard. But uh, I would like to have multiple save files going at the same time just because of the fact that I record videos. So, you know, right now I just lost a season where I was 4-1 and one to show off what's going on in the league mode here, but it's a relatively minor thing. Uh, so this one is more financially focused where every time you win you get like a certain bonus in terms of the amount of money you get and then you invest that money into one or more robots to help you out. What is this $13 robot? That is like substantially worse than everything we've already got. All right. There is a little bit of I wouldn't say emerging gameplay but kind of like more interesting flavor stuff that happens as well like when you uh, have an opponent you'll get a phone call from them. Good to see you again Northern Lion LP. I've heard some interesting things about your team this season perhaps you'll pose an interesting problem. We must all strive to become better. Our contest must facilitate this. This is like um it has this element of kind of like pseudo futuristic new age type stuff going on, you know, kind of sinister holisticness that uh, Frozen Synapse had a little bit of as well. There's also a sports book which can show us um, the betting here. So who are we? We're Lions Love Bots, which obviously you get the ability to name yourself. Where are we? Week one, week one. Are we Lions Love Bots? No, no, we're Sporting Automata. We used to be Lions Love Bots. Music is fantastic, by the way. It's from uh, Nervous Test Pilot again, who I believe did the music for uh, Frozen Synapse. It might even be someone that works at the company. That I'm, it's just their alias. So we're um, let's look at the sports bet here. If you bet on redemption, bet a hundred to win sixty-four. If you bet on us, bet a hundred to win ninety. Oh, so it's like pretty much. Oh, here we go. Let's do this one. Bet a hundred to win one hundred and twenty-seven. Place bet. How much would you like to wager? We'll, we'll put 100 on this one. That's all the money we have. So then if we win, not only do we get the financial bonus, but we win our bet as well. I suppose if you wanted to, you could play this. I'm just going to um, lower our audio here. At least lower the music. Um, hopefully that works. Uh, I suppose you could um, bet against yourself. Or sorry, yeah, bet against yourself and then lose if you think you're going to lose anyway, and then you would gain a little bit of money. But it depends on, you know, you, you would have to be a heavy favorite to really profit there. So it's got kind of a cool system there going on. But there's not much in terms of, like, you know, trading with other teams. There's not a whole lot of stats that I can see. And that's kind of the stuff that I look for out of a quote-unquote franchise mode out of a... Um out of a sports game, and I do play a lot of sports games. Uh, both, you know, officially licensed stuff and stuff that is a little bit more... Uh... uh Original, I guess I would say, or, or niche, and th this definitely fits the bill in terms of that. But that being said, I recognize that this is certainly not a game for everyone, but I am having quite a lot of fun with it so far, and... I actually, like, I know that there's supposed to be... 
like a, a major release for it. Maybe something that's taking it out of early access, although I don't want to say that 100%. Uh, coming in, in later this month, but I was like, you know what? I want to do a video of it now because I'm, you know, I'm passionate about it now. I'm having fun with it right now. Hopefully we'll see a little bit more dynamic play here. Um, okay, so we've got a major hole that I've already identified. We've got a major hole. This guy is supposed to be coming down here, but he got kicked. So that makes an enormous hole in our defense if the enemy is just going to like throw a, a simple pass down this way. They're probably going to get a touchdown out of that before we can get there. So I think we got to have Josh kind of like hug this wall to get down there. And I'm going to run as fast as I can. And then we'll try to still keep this space occupied here just in case they try to throw out a pass this way instead to fake me out. I think probably my first turn was a major misplay. And they're going to be able to throw it down the center here. Sometimes if, if it's a very long pass, then there's a turn break in the air. The question here is whether or not... Oh, you know, I should have had Josh just come around. Oh, we can't come around that way. Sometimes you can come around the back of the end zone. I'm pretty sure we just gave the enemy a touchdown. Although, if they take their turn to kick me in the chest, then we might get out of it. But otherwise, yeah, pretty much we, we left a big enough hole open that they're just going to throw a long ball right off the bat and get us. Yeah, they're going to get that for sure. That dude kicked two people in the chest there, if you didn't notice. So that'll be that. Uh, not a good start for me. Some teams are better. Um, like, it's not balanced right off the bat. Like, this team already has... Oh, no, never mind. I'm an idiot. This team is actually mostly terrible, but very strong. Maybe they're a little bit better. Yeah, like, I have some low-speed characters. They might be a little bit better. So I'm going to pick this up as the uh, quarterback, because I'm a big shot. And I'm going to have Mathis try to get here, and maybe we'll pick up some easy points right down there. And then... Who's this? Kate, you can run down that way. I'm going to have Nick throw up like a fat block right here. He's not the same bot that we upgraded for in the knockout mode. That stuff is, is not persistent. Actually, I'm going to have Nick come down this way. And I'm going to have Josh throw out a block here. There's no point in throwing up a block right here because they won't be able to get to me by the time I pass anyway. Assuming I pass. All right. Let's see how the enemy reacts to this. As of right now, I love... That's how it works in, in Frozen Cortex. I love my first move. And then when I see what the enemy does, I'm like, oh, shit. Maybe I botched that a little bit. All right, Kate, you're going to actually go right here. You only get a limited number of passes, by the way, but that's never been an issue for me. Uh, I've, I've always managed to, uh, you know, either score or lose possession by the time that happens. So I don't think we should pass. Let's try out a couple of moves here. One is we pass to Nick. Nick kicks him in the chest, picks up the ball. But if he runs an ideal defense, that's going to put us in a bad position. Also, what if he just stops a little bit earlier than we do? Like, if he stops here, that's probably going to be bad for us. I got no outs. So I don't think Nick's going to be our, our go-to guy there. Instead, I think I'm going to move Nick even further down. In fact, I think I might move him, like, down here so we can catch a pass this way. I'm going to move Kate onto this square and Mathis onto this square. And I'm going to throw a simple pass here, which should allow me to pick up two easy points. Yeah, that looks like it's going to work. Then we can choose to run, or we can pass it again to Kate and then get another two points and have her run. Either way, I think we're pretty much guaranteed at least four points on this possession, but I would like to get more. All right, so that's an easy one. Uh, if this guy is going to be coming down here, which it looks like he is, that's going to make it difficult for me to get a pass from Kate to Nick through this like tiny hole. I don't know if we could even do that to begin with. It would be tough. Um, so the other thing we could do is run. How's this Josh situation looking up here? He did just kick somebody. What if we have Nick just throw out a fat block like right here? Hope he doesn't get kicked in the chest. And we just have Mathis go for... Oh, he, but he can't get over this block. See, every stadium presents like its own concerns there. If we could get to this avenue, I would love to. Uh, either way, we're guaranteed, I would say, a um, a four-point play here. I'm going to... Well, let's let's try this. What if, what if the AI comes that way? And uh, Mathis throws the ball to Kate. It won't be an interception. It'll be a kick in the chest followed by a pickup. And then if Nick gets lucky, maybe he can get far enough back here that he could actually pick up a pass. But I think it's going to be a little bit dubious. For some reason, I feel like I'm way behind the eight ball in this game. Alright, so we did pick up the extra points there. Um, and this guy, he bit and went in the other direction. We only have one pass remaining. So we either have Kate go for a run here. There's no way she's getting by here. 
you know, you can see their chase zones. There's no way she's getting into either of these spots and getting through with it. So it is basically, this one comes down to Nick. And we can't throw over that, so really, we're going to be trying for an angle like this. And then... You know, the, the touchdown there, but I think the enemy has an advantage, because if they just move to the side, they'll be able to snag an easy interception there. But we don't really have any other options apart from, like, a very risky run. So she's going to pick it up and then immediately get punched in the head. That is not how I anticipated that would go. We have to have myself fall back here, because if they go for a run, we can't stop them if we don't do this. I think Mathis occupying that space is pretty good. I might move him slightly to the side. There's no other passing plays really possible here. So I'm actually just going to prime this one up right off the bat. I don't think the AI is going to pass. I think it's going to go for a run. Oh, it went for a pass. And they've got a blocker in place as well. Oh, this is dangerous. All right. Well, they're probably going to go for the points, if I had to guess. So let's move this waypoint up slightly. They can totally screw me here, by the way. If they find themselves... I'll just get Kate to do that when she comes back. If um, if they move there... Uh, they might have to move a little bit closer. If they move, like, here... Then they might just kick me in the chest. And then that'll be an easy touchdown for them. Uh, but again, I feel like, you know, we've, we've made enough mistakes that it's probably the AI's game to lose. We did not get kicked in the chest. And we actually stopped them from picking up those extra points, I think. And, that, uh, and we got the points because we got possession there. So that's going to take us uh, to to six points with three turns till the end of the game. I think I think we got a chance here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to throw like a long bomb down to Nick. Like I'm pretty sure if they just get in the way here, that'll be a guaranteed interception. They have a ton of time to set it up too. Again, the interceptions are not random. If they're in the space and stationary, they will get the interception. So the other thing we could do is try to run like Kate out over here to receive a pass. We know that there won't be an interception on this one because uh, the unit that's directly in front of myself here is uh, stunned because I just kicked them in the chest. So we'll have to delete like this waypoint for Kate. Move it down here at least. So it should be a pretty yeah, relatively clean reception. Then we just throw a cross to get it to Nick here. I'm going to give this one a try. And you know what? I'm going to have Mathis move onto this point square just in case we can pick up an extra two points uh, if, if the touchdown pass doesn't look good. Oh, did we, did we glitch it out? No? Oh, it, I just clicked through the screen accidentally, so we didn't, get the, uh, we didn't get the bonus. So now, I'm going to pass it back to Mathis because he can pick up some very, very easy points here. I'm going to have Josh occupy this space, and I'm going to have Nick move up to here. And the reason I'm going to do it this way is because this gives us two outs. I don't think they have enough defense to cover us from both angles here. And we should be able to pick up some easy points. This this guaranteed two points will put us in the lead, despite not getting a touchdown. Oh, he's the greatest player of all time. Kate passes it to Mathis. Pathis passes it to Mathis for a two-yard gain. Does he have it? He has it. Okay. But who got kicked in the chest? Okay, Josh got kicked in the chest. This guy, is this guy stunned? What happened on the last turn? He's stunned and Mathis got it, which I think should make for an easy touchdown pass to Nick. We can't push the arrow too far out, but that should be pretty good. And then Nick will catch the ball and just take it through to the uh, the end zone. Assuming there's no interception here, but there's no defense covering Nick, so I think Nick is just going to pull away with this one. It's a long pass, so it spends an extra term in the air, uh, turn in the air. Uh, but we'll just have Nick catch it here. We are technically in overtime, so the next points will win. That's a great catch. Again, there's no chance of dropping it. And I wonder... You know, we should just take the guaranteed points. But I'll try to be a little cute and, and get some bonus points out of it. Like this. Yeah. Just to give Nick uh, some extra... Some extra stats, even though there's no, like, League Leaders screen or anything like that. Again, I really like the animations here. The visual style might not be for everybody, but I think it does a good job of mix mixing, like, the elegance of professional athletics with this kind of, like, cybernetic, uh, kind of cool aesthetic as well. Huge comeback victory. Can we just see a full replay? Yeah, I want to watch this game from the start. I've never watched a full replay before. So we get the full cinematic camera angle. Sometimes the cinematic camera angle does make it difficult uh, to see the overall picture, but it does do a pretty good job of dynamically highlighting the, the plays as they happen. So this one's me picking up the ball. Looks stylish. Picking up some easy points there. Mathis throws it over to Kate. 
Cade gets some more easy points, then gets punched in the jaw. Not a good strategy there. She's laying on the ground. They do a pass that for a second I was pretty sure it was absolutely going to destroy my actual uh, progress. But then, I don't know who that was. They came through in the clutch. Might even have been myself. Then we're going to do some sweet tick attacker. Mathis with the very clutch drop kick to the chest, dying light style. Didn't get the bonus points there for reasons. I guess I was se stepping slightly outside of the square. And then Nick is downtown to not only get the win, but also, you know, put more nails in their coffin based on the fact that uh, he stepped on those extra point squares. It's an unusual game. It's a game that's not for everybody. I've been having a, uh, a very good time with it thus far. Uh, so we won 227 bucks because we bet 100. So that's our principal plus our what we actually won. Um, and we got 700 for winning. I think it's based on the, the point differential or like the number of points you score. It's based on something like that. So um, after advancing the week, we can go to the robot market. And now we have $927. That's enough to buy and Cruden. Do we have another one that might be like a little better than that? Oh, we had a 1420 one. Banned from the Liga one time, a legal loophole now makes the Eviscerator acceptable. This unit played well in the college leagues. That is actually, like, some crazy good stats. I think I might try to save up for that. But, again, we could also just buy this one. The Ancrudin series has a decent number of Cortex points. Doves occasionally land on this player's shoulders. Well, you know what? Let's make that our uh, speed and release. I don't want to make that a quarterback, because we can get a character that has, like, a better throw stat. But I don't know, with a high speed... Oh, that unit is so good, too. Uh, with a high speed and high release... This is obviously going to be like a some kind of uh, center back. High speed, good chase, high release. I don't know, it's almost like just a good utility player. Like, we, we can have this take, like, Kate's spot, and then it'll become Kate. So you upgrade your units week over week. And you can, unlike the uh, knockout mode, you can buy more than one unit per week if your finances allow it. But anyway, um, on, on top of all the stuff that I've talked about over the past, like, 40 minutes or so, this is, uh, you know, also a multiplayer-focused game, so you can find games online. The games online work like correspondence chess, basically. So uh, you send a challenge to somebody, and it's asynchronous, if that makes sense. Like... You you will both move, and you, like your turns will be taken at the same time, but you might program your turn at like 9 a.m. on a Tuesday. They might program their turn at like 8 p.m. on a Thursday. I currently have one game which requires a turn, which is literally from like last March. So I, I think it's the kind of thing where unless you're part of a dedicated community for it or you're willing to have games that maybe just go nowhere or take forever, you want to play this with friends and have kind of like a time limit for each other uh, to make it happen. But there are, you know, you can see games that they get completed here. Not that many games per hour, which is why I suggest, you know, if, you, if you're ba banking on playing this multiplayer, I hope you have a friend to play it with. Uh, but that is, that's Frozen Cortex. The single player stuff in here is really engaging for a very narrow subset of players that love strategy games and maybe either like or are attracted to or don't have a problem with the uh, sports style aesthetic here, which I don't. You know, if you like Blood Bowl, this is like a little bit more of a tactics-based Blood Bowl as opposed to RNG folk. Well, not that Blood Bowl is very obviously skill-dependent, but there's a, a level of RNG as well. This takes the RNG out of it. Some people will like it, some people won't like that. I find it pretty cool. Not the kind of thing that's for everybody, uh, especially at a relatively premium price point of 25 US dollars for the uh, early access version. That being said, I find it engaging so far, and I hope that uh, some of you out there do as well. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. There will be a link to pick this up on Steam if you're interested. Again, I think I mentioned the, the price and its availability and its early access state enough. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more first impressions like this in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.